Hey, what's up, guys? I'm David Demuzio. And I'm Steve Cook. This is Hair Loss Hope, and today we are answering a question from a frequent viewer. I know because I recognize his username, vman14854. He says, David, I was wondering if you could make a video about flying for a hair transplant, what to pack, how and when to fly after surgery, how not to lose your luggage, etc. Any info you have from your experiences flying after a hair transplant would be fantastic, thanks. So Steve, you have a lot of experience helping people fly after hair transplants. What, first off, would you suggest that they pack? I would say the most important things to pack would be a button-down shirt. That way you don't have to pull anything over your head once you've had a hair transplant. Mm. And the second thing would be an airplane pillow, like a neck pillow that kind of you know, goes around your neck that you can lean back on and not put any pressure on either the suture line or the donor zone if it's an FUE procedure. Okay, so kind of one of the U-shaped neck pillows that you'll see them selling at the airport? Yes, that's perfect. And then just any kind of button-down shirt, just as long as it buttons all the way up and all the way down so you don't have to take something over your head and potentially rip a graft out of your head or something like that. Correct, yes, yes. And possibly even, although the next day might be a little tricky, um, I would say a brand new or a clean baseball hat. If you're one of the guys or girls that wants to put a baseball hat on. Um, most of the clinics that are gonna do your procedure are gonna offer you some surgical um, surgical caps, and that's probably better to use, but if you don't wanna walk through the airport like that, you can use a baseball cap as long as it's new or clean. That is a good thing to think about because you will be walking through an airport with surgery that just happened, so if you're not okay with looking a little bit funny, then you need something to be able to cover your head with. And so probably even some kind of a soft cap, but something that, you know, not like a skull cap that could get caught on graphs, right? Correct. Nothing that is either wool or cotton, no beanies, okay? Mm -hmm. In the old days, old, old, old days, you could put like a do-rag on that's kind of a polyester or anything that's kind of smooth. For African-American female patients that travel back on airplanes with traction alopecia, we tell them to bring a silk scarf or a silk headband that can go over the entire grafted area and look absolutely perfect mm. because they're all FUT, so there's no shave in the heads in behind the recipient area. Okay, cool. And now- when should you fly after surgery? What would you suggest? Well, logistically is what we're talking about. We'll back up a second, go to when you should arrive before the procedure. Mm -hmm. And the arrival should be the day before. You don't want to try to do one of these quick turnarounds because this is a lot of stress on you. Um, obviously, it's very expensive and the clinic needs to be prepared. They should prepare you properly by having you arrive into the town, city, state, country, the day before the procedure so you get at least some sleep at night. Mm -hmm. And that way you can start real early in the morning. There shouldn't be any complications or problems, but if anything comes up or someone arrives late to the clinic or whatnot, they'll have the whole day to do your procedure. You wanna go back to the hotel or wherever you're staying and you wanna get as best the night's sleep as you can using that neck pillow, that airplane pillow to prop up that head on a few pillows. Mm, you can use it at the hotel as well the night after. That's right. Mm. And then you want to travel back the following day. So that gives you time if you've got any oozing, which some people like to think they're bleeding. It's not. It's just a little bit of fluid that's used in the procedure with a little bit of tint of blood. That goes away most likely by the next morning. You'll feel a little bit more comfortable so you won't look like you're bleeding on the airplane right after the procedure. Lastly, how not to lose your luggage. Good question. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I knew the answer to that. I would say don't check luggage and just, yeah, go with a carry-on if you can. You know, this is only one night generally that you're in another city, right? The night before, you usually leave out. Oh, no, I guess two nights, two the nights. night before and then the night after your surgery. So two nights. So I feel like for two nights, you can probably get by with a carry-on and a little um, backpack or something like that. I'm here for three nights and I have that's all I did. So you can do it too. I hope this answers 
all of your questions. Hey, what's up guys? I am down here performing at Mahu Sinesta Beach Resort here in St. Martin. And I brought these right here with me. These were made by my friend Brian, who I went to Brazil with last summer. And these are his hair fibers. He did a ton of work trying to find the best formulation of hair fibers. And this is actually a video right here. This is real time, 27 seconds, including him putting it on, patting, combing, everything. 27 seconds, what these do for your hair. It's pretty incredible. So I brought these with me because I'm performing here, super bright lights. I wanna feel my most confident from every single angle, no matter what lights are shining on me. And these do it for sure. My hair looks awesome when I use these. So I think this is one of the most underutilized things for guys with thinning or thin hair. You can use my code. My code is HOPE. So if you go to the link in the video description and use the code HOPE, you will get 25% off. That's my affiliate link. Um, I'd love you to support Brian. Get something that you're definitely gonna use and is gonna improve your life. And yeah, HOPE 25% off. See ya.